enough to get vaccinated. Yep. So I can get back out there in the world of pool and billiards. Poke some more wabby. Yeah. Yeah, I'm finally old enough. Or young enough. The Johnson and Johnson vaccine. One and done. That's how I like to do things. Get her done. Issue is, I gotta drive to Blaine, Tennessee. It's about an hour away. Blaine, Tennessee. Just a little town. Somewhere in Tennessee, I reckon. Off to see the wizard. This tip on is like a number two pencil eraser, just flat as a pancake. You know, I mean, just you know, it was really super soft. And I found out that it was an Elk Master tip. And back then, you know, it was either Triangle or Elk Master, which is the same damn company, and also the same company that makes Master Chalk. So, um, I played with the Super Soft Helpmasters, a little bit softer than a train. And it was because, um, I was fascinated after watching some guy do a draw shot, you know. It was just like, wow, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. And this house cue, um, the tip felt like it was actually like grabbing you know, so I had way more control over that house stick um, than all the other house sticks. So that's the one that the manager put aside for me. If he saw me coming in the door, I was going to get that stick. And uh, somebody it wasn't me. Somebody shaped it a little bit so it wasn't so flat, and it worked even better than the drill shot. You know, I sit there. Hours and hours and hours just doing nothing but shooting draw shots. Because you could draw them back to yourself, you know. Just reset it up over and over and over and over again. And so I learned how to be accurate with it. And then that never stopped. That never, uh, that never changed. That never, you know, I never got used to anything else. Um, so I use Upmaster here. So does Efren Reyes, but I think he hardens them up. And Corey Dole, um, he flattens them out. He doesn't like them real thick. And, uh, yeah. I still use Upmaster to this day, and they're American made, and um, you can get like 5000 for a dollar. You know. I mean, because they don't last as long. He's a dime shape on that tip. So, you know, they flatten out a little bit quicker than most cues, so you have to, you know, keep reshaping them. But, you know, like once a week or so. And, of course, that takes a little bit off the tip, and before you know it, it's down to the far on time to change it. But that's not a big deal either. I can I change them myself. 
El Paso. players in your area and don't just you know watch them and talk to them and most of all play them as often as you can and there's a big misconception about doing this and, and what your brain is doing while you're doing this but you can take like a pool room with 20 regular really bad players right and so a legitimately good player walks in one day and decides, well, he likes it there because they have the cheapest beers or whatever reason. So he's going to hang out there for a year or two. And what happens is the level of play throughout those 20 players goes up. And it goes up semi-quickly. Quicker than it would if that guy never walked in. Um, so in a room full of 20 bad players, you know, the guy the guy who can run three balls is, is a great player because it's all relative, you know, and people don't know. They don't know what good is. They don't know what good is. I mean, really legitimately good. Um, you know, they can do something and that guy can, so he's the best player in the room. And it's not saying much and it's not going to do much for your game at all. In fact, it's going to hold you back big time. Yeah, right now, it's, it has the whole state of Ohio it has all these great players, and that's because you know, great players moved there and hung out there for years. And they left behind a legacy, and, and a whole lot of players got real good. Uh, back in the 80s and early 90s, uh, Florida had a pro tour. And so you had like 10 or 11 top shelf pros, really great pro players, moving to Tampa to, you know, to take part in this tour. And a couple of years later, the whole city of Tampa is suddenly a great player. You can't find a mediocre player. And that's what happened in the 80s. And, and before all that, it was Houston. All the action was in Houston. And Houston is still good because a couple of pro players move there. And there's parts of Texas where everybody just seems to play great. And that's because there's a couple of great you know, pro players that move to Texas. And then this is what happened. And, and it's, not, um, it's not really the fact that you're learning technical stuff when you're playing a good, a really legitimately great player. It's more that your brain keys in on what's important and what's not important. So when you're playing one of these folks, you know that, you know, if you cut that cue ball loose and lose control of this table, you're going to lose. So you stop doing that. And you know that you have to control the break if you want to keep this guy in his chair, so you stop cutting the cue ball loose on the break. So it's just kind of like a matter of survival, which forces your brain and body to stop doing stupid stuff and keep things simple. And this is what makes you a great. So the focus on impressing your friends or picking up girls and stuff like that, all, all that ends and becomes keeping it simple, finding the easy way, um, not moving the cue ball, you know, four rounds to get position or try to get position and fail, um, you know, not 
breaking like a monster until you can legitimately break like a monster and just focus on controlling the cube and the wombo and the wingbo. Um, yeah, all the, all the you know, crazy stuff ends and, and you get, your brain begins to focus on winning. In the process of all that, you know, your ego gets bruised and battered, and you know, it's either going to make you quit, um, or just retreat back, you know, to what it was, or it's going to make you a tough son of a bitch, and then, you know, it's going to give you a lot of heart, and prove that you're tough, and then, so what, what happens is one day if you stick with it, you can keep on getting back up when you've been knocked down. And you're going to beat that guy. And that's when the floodgates open and you're on your way because your confidence goes through the roof. And now you become that great player. It takes, it takes a lot of uh, internal strength and mental toughness. You gotta be a tough son of a bitch to play this sport because you're gonna you're gonna take some lumps on the way. It's just the way it is. This sport is not for whistles. Yeah, I'm here, but I'm like 25 minutes early, so I'm looking for something to eat. <coughs> and the problem here is I'm in the middle of the These people eat around here. There's, there's always a McDonald's somewhere. There ain't none here. I am like way out in the desert. this so I'm not really sure what's going on here. We have a little bit of a cut on the one. Yeah. 
I'm trying to get back out for the two, which was right there, and I ran into the three, and they were going to do that. But in this case, it didn't upset it too much. And it's still center table, so it shouldn't be a problem. And I hear, I do remember the shot, and I have an angle on the three, and I just have to get by that six and go to the rail there, and it should be. It should be relatively easy out, but we're running into a little bit of problem here. But you want to shoot that soft. And I decide to draw this five ball back up for the six in the same corner back there. And I, I should have went to the rail and got a steeper angle on it. Yeah, we met down here. But it's all good. A little, actually, a lot of cut here. This is like a. Probably a 70 degree angle. And again, I decided to draw it all the way back down table. And I went a little bit too far. So now I have to shoot that 8 up there in the right hand corner. And the big, the big issue there was getting around the 9. I had to draw it around the 9. I could have went, you know, another two rails. But I didn't want to play with it too much. It's best not to, you know, move the cue ball too much unless you absolutely have to. <clears throat> and here I have that same angle that I had on one of those earlier balls. So I could have drew that back and got a whole lot closer to the nine. But I, I would have been flirting with that scratch or going too long, too far back up table and getting really bad on the nine. And then I rattled the nine. So that, you know, that was not a very good rack, but I got out there. I'm certainly not proud of that. And I'm still stretching because I think that was the first, the first rack that was on this table. I'm just getting kind of warmed up here. And when you get old, you get a little bit more tight in your bones and joints, and you have to stretch more often. You ever see a stiff old man play pool? Well, I don't want to be that guy, so I'm always stretching and trying to loosen up a little bit. If that ever happens to me around that guy, just please go ahead and shoot. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm breaking with the same stick I'm playing with, which is a 16 ounce sneaky pee. It wasn't the greatest break in the world. Um, now, you know, I know I made a couple balls on the break, but, you know, actually I made the nine ball. And if you're playing a ghost, the pro ghost here, you have a choice of re racking. So go ahead and, and, you know, taking it, not spotting any balls, but the nine. And then, um, you know, go ahead and run it out. So I'm choosing to re back here and start all over. That would be a two pack. It does count as a two pack. Even though, yeah, I gotta work on my break more. See, I'm, I'm, I just switched back to this old cue here, which I'm breaking and playing with, it, and I haven't dialed it in yet. I may go back to the Q-Tech, or I may further customize this old sneaky Pete here, and put the weight back in, and you know, put a grip on it. Because I love this stick, it's as straight as it can be. There's a little bit of a better break, but not much better. And I should run this ball. See, the problem here is the three is up table and the four is down table, and I'm on the rail. So getting back up on that four is really, really, really tough. But I do give it a whirl and something goes wrong here. I'm shooting off the rails, a tough shot. And I just shot it too hard and rattles it and dink it around. Get back down the table and that's it. I really need a cigarette. So that's about the gist of this run out. Which was actually more about answering your questions and uh, getting the COVID vaccine. Peace, guys. Mm -hmm.
my own vaccination. So if you guys get coronavirus, don't blame me. Uh, no side effects, not yet. They kept me in there for 15 minutes afterward just to make sure. Now, I didn't know I had a choice between the right arm and the left arm. I did. And I chose my left arm because I can play pool on my hand. <laughs> There's a tiny little pinch, you know, I mean, you can feel it. Then they push it in further, and you, I mean, you know it's going in further, but you can't really feel it. And she takes it in, or she squirts it in there. It goes into your muscle, in your deltoid muscle. So, that's it. I feel perfect, except I need a cigarette really bad. I gotta stop and get this. Give you a little card 